There is a fascinating documentary uh, or podcast series on Spotify that you can listen to for free. And uh, it's entitled Wind of Change. I believe that's I believe that's the name of the of the um, podcast. And what the podcast is about is it explores the question of the song entitled Wind of Change by the band The Scorpions. Now, I had never really, I didn't really know this song that well. I maybe had heard it uh, like maybe a couple of times. It's like a power ballad. Um, <clears throat> the Scorpions were a heavy metal band from Germany in the 80s. Uh, I remember them best for the their song Rock You Like a Hurricane, which <laughs> for me, the way that it was, th this is neither here nor there, but the line always kind of dr drove me nuts. Here I am, rock you like a hurricane. I just thought, like, there's something, I, I know that these aren't, these are people who don't speak English as a first language, but, but isn't it, should it be, here I am to rock you like a hurricane, <laughs> or, or here I am gonna rock you like a hurricane, but there's something about, like, there's, there's just some crucial bit that gets left out there, like right? those, these two disjointed sentences <laughs> in the, in these song lyrics that, that makes it sound more, uh, well, more like a, a song written by, by a foreigner, which it was. Um, anyhow, rock you like a hurricane, regardless of my, my critique of the, uh, the lyrics was a huge hit and the Scorpions were a huge band. Um, and uh, what this um, documentary, or sorry, that's the second time I called it that, uh, it's what this podcast explores is, is the question of whether the song Wind of Change was uh, actually written by the CIA. And um, apparently the song Wind of Change by the Scorpions was huge, uh, in other places in the world, it was huge in Europe. It was huge in Russia. Um, and the band even recorded the song with, in Russian, with the Russian language. Uh, um, and the circumstances surrounding the writing of the song or the alleged circumstances, the official story of how the song was written is that uh, they they had just played a gig, they just played this show in uh, in Moscow, and it was this huge event, um, uh, you know, like uh, Rock for Peace or something like that. But it was ostensibly about, you know, uh, don't do drugs. To, you know, uh, uh, to uh, the, the the proceeds went to pay for. Uh, uh, drug rehabilitation, alcohol rehabilitation stuff. But of course, the bands were all, you know, uh, mostly, or mostly uh, a, a bunch of junkies who, who got drunk and high all the time. It was, a, it was this um, uh, lineup of, you know, famous uh, heavy metal bands uh, in the 80s, hair metal bands, essentially. From Motley Crue to Skid Row uh, to Bon Jovi. Um, uh, and, and, uh, a couple of others I can't think of right now. And also, uh, the Scorpions. The Scorpions were the only, apparently the only, uh, non, uh, American band to play this massive gig, uh, in, in Russia in the late eighties. I think it was in summer of 88, um, when things were starting to open up there. Uh, you know, those, those old, those of us old enough to, Old enough to remember Gorbachev, Glasnost, Perestroika, uh, all those kinds of things. They, so they played this show, uh, and apparently after they played this show, the uh, <clears throat> the singer of the of the Scorpions was so taken with this moment uh, that that things were changing in the Soviet Union, and that that uh, you know that that freedom was coming. That he wrote this song uh, called "Wind of Change," um, and it's a it's it's a song that begins with a whistling whistling bit, which kind of reminds me of I'm not a big hard rock uh, I'm not a headbanger kind of guy, but but uh, 
but <laughs> I can make certain associations, and it makes me think of the, the song by Guns N' Roses called Patience, uh, which also begins with the whistling uh, part, or with the whistling of the melody before the, the actual start of the song. Um, and the, so the song was a huge hit, and uh, uh, it seems that uh, the, 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 the maker of this uh, podcast knew somebody who had heard uh, uh, somebody else say that the that Wind of Change was was our our thing. It was written by the CIA. This, he heard this from somebody within the CIA. But when this person who had heard it was asked if he could tell his story again uh, for the podcast, he very quickly said, oh, no, I can't talk about this. I'll, I will, uh, you know, I'll get arrested. Uh, there'll, there'll be felony charges against me, um, which is odd. Like, what's what's the felony? I, I don't know, uh, like exposing, is it, would it be, uh, uh, would it be, would they say it, it's treasonous or something? I don't know. Um, like, uh, it seems that whistleblowing, something that the CIA does when the CIA doesn't want you to do it, is a good way, well, to get arrested or maybe to have something worse happen to you. And, indeed, this guy, who he's talking to on the phone during this portion of the, of the uh, podcast... He gets very agitated, and he, he, we don't actually hear his voice, but we hear him on the other line, and and uh, or or we uh, we hear through the person who's talking to him on the other line how quickly uh, he he wants nothing to do with this. Now that's immediately suspicious, um, <laughs> and it that, that that it doesn't escape the notice of the person putting this this podcast together now. Over the course of the podcast, um, a lot of interesting things are exposed. We we uh, we get to know, or you know, we find out that the manager for a ton of these heavy metal bands, for the, for the, the the manager of all of these these huge uh, heavy metal bands in the eighties, had this very. Um, uh, this this very murky past, uh, this very unsavory past. Uh, I think that's the more proper way to put it. It, it. He was a drug dealer, and uh, not only that, but he was tight with Noriega uh, when Noriega was still cool to uh, you know for for the U.S. when when he was a U.S. ally, um, and uh, and then. After something something turned, something got twisted in U.S. foreign policy, as it often does, and Noriega was was the bad guy. Then they uh, they arrested him, of course, and uh, uh, and people who were involved in Noriega's operation, um, you know, the, all all of the all of the people you know who in 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 D.C. who were down with Noriega, like. Uh, President George H. W. Bush and uh, the, the the head of the CIA at that time, Casey, I think it was, and and others, um, they suddenly you know change change their tune, and uh, and so all the people involved in the Noriega operation were arrested, uh, and and they threw the book at them and they got you know years and years in in prison, except for this guy. This guy who later became the, this music manager, uh, he did not have to serve a single day in prison. But what he was told to do was to to have these to stage the, these concerts uh, uh, for for uh, for peace or you know to, for the anti uh, anti drug cause, and uh, um, and that that was this this concert in, uh, in Moscow. So, <laughs> you know, connecting the dots there, you know, the CIA is, is tight with these drug lords. And then, then, uh, they, when, when things turn, uh, and, and the CIA still, you know, maybe, 
maybe they, uh, I mean, we know that the CIA sells drugs. I mean, don't, don't bother me. Don't, don't try to tell me otherwise. We know that they're a big, that, that they, they play a huge role in the drug trade. We know that amongst the many other nefarious things that they do. Um, so, so they had the power to, uh, to see to it that this guy, uh, who had these connections in the rock and roll world, very high profile connections. They said, well, okay, we will, we'll not, we'll, we'll go easy on you as long as you do this for us. And what did he have him do for, for them? He had them, uh, put on this, this concert, which they were able to somehow coordinate, uh, because of what was happening in the Soviet Union at the time with the Soviet Union, uh, being in, in the, uh, in this transition period and, and things being sort of chaotic there, um, has them play the show in Russia, which is a huge moment of propaganda. It's, it's like saying to, to, uh, all of these, uh, Soviet youth, you know, who secretly worship are worshipful of rock and roll, you know, in the West, it's part of what makes the West so cool. Uh, here are, you know, we're, here's a band, here, you get to see all your heroes. Oh, Ozzy, <laughs> Ozzy was, Ozzy Osbourne was another one of the performers at this, uh, at this, um, heavy metal festival in, in Moscow. So, uh, just forgot, I forgot about him. Of course, he's, he's definitely worth mentioning. <clears throat> so they put on the show and then afterwards the, st the story goes that, the Scorpions guy is all like, uh, uh, wow, this is so cool. Things are, this is a, a, a moment of history. Uh, you know, things are opening up. <clears throat> uh, the winds of freedom are blowing. Um, and he writes this ballad, this power ballad called Wind of Change. And uh, as, as, the, uh, as the, po the podcast uh, guy uh, mentions, Scorpions were not really a political band. They didn't write about uh, political events. It was, you know, here I am, rock you like a hurricane. That, that, that this kind of heavy metal uh, cliches uh, was what they were into. Hair metal, you know. But um, in this case, they they decided to get really deep and really serious and and write this song that had a huge effect um, uh, on. Soviet youth, just like the show did, and managed to, uh, uh, you know, managed to promote, uh, you know, the, again, the, the, the West, the, and, and of course this, the, the history of the CIA is replete with, you know, efforts to promote Western, uh, um, art or Western literature um, you know, the, the, the Paris Review was, was uh, affiliated with the CIA. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Saunders' book about the CIA. Uh, so I think it's something I, I've talked about before here uh, on, on this channel. So prom the CIA getting involved in promoting uh, and, and perhaps even playing a significant role, perhaps even, uh, you know, hiring someone to write a song, uh, because there's a lot of anomalies involving this song. The song was written supposedly by the lead singer, but but the, it was it was the guitarist who is generally the songwriter um, for uh, for the Scorpions. So there's all this stuff uh, that's that's unusual. No smoking gun, but again, the story, the the, the fact that it was heard uh, uh, by someone. Uh, within the CIA who was then very, uh, you know, very reluctant to, to talk about it or to, to wanted to disassociate himself from the, any kind of project that, that would investigate it. To me, that, that, that says, uh, a lot, a hell of a lot about the, the, the possible veracity of the story. Now, as this, uh, podcast goes along, what's both fascinating and annoying about it is it's, uh, it's it's um, by this guy who's who, who I guess is sort of a, a mainstream liberal politically speaking, um, and so he's caught between these these two 
these two worlds because there was once a time when it was it was it was okay in fact it was approved of to say to point out the the, the crimes of the CIA to, to, to do so uh, and be on the left and be you know a, a Democrat and, and so forth uh, or or you know maybe even more radical than a Democrat whatever whatever the case may be to identify yourself with the left and also say, uh, be a conspiracy theorist who says the, 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 these are the things that the CIA is doing. But over the course of the thing, the, the podcast, we see that he's struggling because, you know, the, now he's like, oh, but the, but the Russians are promoting disinformation now and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, um, and so it gets to be this, you know, he starts to, you see that he's starting to get pulled in different directions um, unfortunately, because he's not as independent of a thinker as one would hope for him to be. And so, you know, it, it, it gets into this weird territory now where if you're on the left, at least if you're, if you're a neoliberal type, if you, if you're like a, if you're a Democrat voter type, mostly you have to dig the CAA, you have to dig uh, the, the feds, you have to think that they're, they're good and that, that Russia is bad and Putin is bad and, and stuff like that. And it's just like, it's like the reverse of what things were during the cold war where, you know, the, it was the ultra conservative types who would say, no, no, never trust Russia, trust the CIA, trust our own institutions. You know, America is the land of the free. Um, now it's now the entire, uh, paradigm is, has, has, turned upside down. Um, but, but all of that aside, I think the question of whether this song is, uh, you know, is, might be, might have been written by the CIA is, is a quite interesting question. Um, and whether or not it was written by the CIA, it certainly was heavily promoted by front groups that were affiliated with the CIA. So, um, I'd rec I'd recommend listening, uh, to this podcast again with, with the caveat that, uh, you know, this guy is not as bold, not, not as much of a independent thinker as one would like him to be. And that gets more and more evident as the, uh, as the podcast goes on. Um, but anyway, just, just some thoughts about, about it. Anybody else, anybody else heard this, uh, this, uh, rumor or this, this hurt of this notion. Um, any of you metalheads out there, uh, uh, have you ever heard about this? Cause I know I've got some metalheads who, who, who watch my channel, even though I'm, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm very non-metal myself, but anyway, just, just some interesting thoughts. Uh, let me know what y'all think. If you have any thoughts, uh, thanks for watching.